Hi everyone, this is Elsie. Welcome to part 8 of my Blue Rift tutorial series. In this video, we'll be going over conversation trees and how to set them up on NPCs. In addition, I'll be going over interact points in this video and how you can make an NPC out of anything. First things first, we need to put down an NPC to talk to. Let's put one at the beginning. As usual, go to the, your actor classes tab and type in NPC underscore. This will give you access to all the NPCs in the game. We're not gonna get too crazy here. Let's just put in, how about a nomad. Now nomads are referred to as sunburns because they used to be for a sand level and not a sky level. But, you know, whatever. Another fun fact is that you actually don't need to right click to put an NPC down. You can also drag and drop them just like that. I personally don't really ever use that feature, but somebody pointed it out in the previous video. So I thought I should mention it just so that you know that it's a thing. Some people might find that easier, but I don't. I personally find it way easier to just right click on a spot and then have it put down because then you don't have to have the thing open. Anyways, another fun little shortcut, if you press the end key on your keyboard, and I mean like the end key, the one that's next to page down, you might not have this key and if you don't, uh, don't worry about this, but if you press the end key, it'll snap the whatever you have selected to the ground. Now, often this is hat in time will get it incorrect but it'll give you a general good idea it'll like snap it to the ground pretty easily and then you just you know adjust it manually so that it looks correct let's move this back a bit so that the player doesn't spawn right in their face and just like that we have our npc in the level they'll follow us around when we move around and they'll squeak when we hit them but they don't really do much else than that we need to we want to make we want to talk to them. In order to make it so that you can talk to them, select your NPC and press F4 or go to the properties. I mentioned this before, but I'm, you know, just mentioning it again in case you forgot how to access the object property. Under the conversations tab, there will be a little part here that says conversation tree. This is where you would designate what for what to have them say. If we go open our content browser and go into the base game, we can swap from favorites to all types, go down to conversation tree, and then search for conversations this way. But of course, this is kind of limited in what you can do, because, you know, these are pre-made things. I'm gonna hope this is named what I think it is, uh, Twilight. There we go. See, over here, rift gates are spawned in using bells. Use your kid's hat to find them. There's a bunch of fancy stuff there, but you know, don't worry about it. There we go. This one? There it is. The twilight bell is just ahead. How about, uh... The twilight bell is this way. Let's use this one, just for demonstration. So select your conversation tree, go over to the NPC, and then type in the name of it. Or you can just select it in the content browser and then press this green arrow and that will fill it in. Now, when we go in, now we can talk to them. The twilight bell is this way. This, this conversation is usually used for uh, the mini conversation tr like bubble. And I'll get into how to do that in a bit. Actually, I'll get into that right now. Now, this works different per NPC, so you kind of have to look into the, th into the uh, settings. But in most situations, the way that you would do this, notice how there's conversation tree, conversation trees? Conversation trees is for having stuff random. Basically having it so that the conversation tree is random when you do it. In this, you can also make it so that it triggers on approach. By clicking this green plus icon that says add a new item, you'll add a new conversation tree, which you can then click it and then, you know, change it here. 
Let's put in the Twilight Bell and then go into Trigger on Approach. Alright, so I don't know why that didn't work. I've never actually messed with this. I was kind of just going to figure it out on my own. But this gives me a good excuse to talk about what to do when you can't figure out how to do something. Now, the obvious answer is to go, you know, talk to somebody in the Hat and Time modding, you know, the modding help channel in the Discord. But for stuff like this, the base game already does this. And for specific examples like this, you can go to a specific map that has a ton of examples of how to set stuff up like this. So for example, what you want to do is go File, New Level, and from this template choose Gameplay 1. Ignore this message, it doesn't mean anything. In this map, there are a ton of examples for a ton of different actors on how to set them up. Over here is the example for triggering conversations on approach. Life of Mafia is hard work. People no appreciate dedication to a job. So this Mafia has what we want. So what we're going to do is select him and then open his properties. As we see, I was partially right. They do use this little conversation trees node down here. What did, I, what did they do different? Trigger on approach. This is the part where you go back and try it again, even though you did exactly that and it still didn't work. Okay, so I figured out what it was. I did have it set up correctly, but it doesn't trigger if you spawn on them. Good to know, good to know. Anyways, that's how you set that up. You, it's just, you put it in here, and then you choose trigger on approach. I'm now going to redo, nah, I'm not gonna redo this. Turns out my solution, what, turns out I was actually already correct, it just wasn't triggering, you know, if I spawned in front of it. But it was a good exam, but it was a good way to let you know how to check something out. Now, for another thing, if you wanna check something more specific, you wanna go to, open then go to hat and time game cooked pc maps and in here are the maps for everything in the game keep in mind if your computer isn't very good you might have trouble loading these because they are pretty beefy maps and loading them in game isn't as taxing as loading them in the editor just a heads up so let's go and load so let's go and load something simple, like say one of the time rifts. Let's go to spaceship. And when you load a level from the, from cooked, when you load a cooked level, as in a level from the base game, you will notice that it will not have the lighting. This actually looks fine usually, but usually everything will be black. Just hit the unlit node and it'll usually fit. But for time rifts, it seems to be fine. So now this is one of the first time rifts that you'll usually get access to. Uh, there's not really much that I would pull from here. I'm just using this as an example, but you can load up a map and then sort of figure out what that actor is or just copy and paste it and put it in your level. Nobody's gonna know. And for a, for a quick, for a quick, like synopsis of what is what everything is because it because of beta a lot of stuff is named wood chapter three is actually battle of the birds because that used to be chapter three and subcon used to be chapter two but now they're swapped but the file names don't change because i imagine they set them up in a way that like would have caused issues if they changed the file names literally can't sink is the alpine cruise sands and sails is chapter four, or you know, the Al Alpine skyline. Subcon Forest is obviously Subcon Forest. Harbor is Mafia Town, and Castle is the finale. Time Rift Cave is Purple Rifts. Time Rift Water is Blue Rifts. Hand Time Entry is basically this like placeholder map. Yeah, yeah. Hand Time Entry. Woo! 
Uh, I don't really know what this is for. I've seen people use it to like test playables or something. It's there if you want it. But anyways, that's enough about that. That was a huge tangent. That was a huge tangent. And you know, that wasn't that important to the tutorial. I'm still going to say it though. Anyways, enough about that. Let's make our guy say something unique because saying something from the base game feels, you know, doesn't feel unique. We want to make our own conversation tree. Let's open up the content browser and scroll down to our rift. Now, what you'll notice under every mod that you make, there will be a content folder which has all of your packages. What is a package? Well, a package is what you store all of your custom assets in. For example, this is for Declaration 2. If I go in here, there's a bunch of fancy custom assets, like all the voice lines and all that jazz. So, we need to make a package. There are a few ways you could do this. For example, if you are making something like a conversation tree, you can just hit new and then it'll come up with what kind of thing. Factory refers to what kind of actor it's gonna be. So we're gonna scroll down to conversation tree. Our conversation tree will be called nomad tutorial one. And you don't have to call it that, I just wanna call it. And the, up the package here, you just name this to whatever you want your package to be named. Be sure it does not conflict with another mod's package or the ga the main game is package. It has things to separate them, but it will cause issues. So try to make it unique to you. What I recommend is usually doing formatting something along the lines of tutorial underscore content. That's a bad, this is actually a bad content package because that's a little bit generic. So let's call it something like LCL underscore tutorial content. But for most things, just like say you're making a like Delfino Plaza mod. Let's c call it like Delfino Plaza underscore content. And one, two, three, you know, stuff like that. This is the uh, formatting I usually do. I'm just gonna call this Blue Rift Tutorial Content One. I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna make any more packages than this, but yeah. This will make a package under the new packages folder. In order to put it into your mod folder, simply go in, click into the, your package, just like click into anywhere that there is empty space and hit control S and that will save it. Yes, I know control S doesn't save the map. It will save the content browser though. It's just weird like that. Now you'll notice there's a content folder under your maps fo folder. Little Rift tutorial underscore content one. Now we have it. Now another way you can do this is by going into import. Say you're importing a custom. That's spoilers. You can also click the import button, which will bring up the import tab, which will let you bring something in. Let's grab. Let's grab a random texture just for explanation. Let's grab uh, this picture of Stu McKenzie. Uh, it'll give you this message. Okay. So it didn't give me a prompt to uh, actually import that, and the reason for that is because this editor sucks. Sometimes it just doesn't give you a prompt to do it, in which case you'll have to restart the editor. Then it will give you the prompt. Now, here's the thing. Say you want to make a package, but you don't so you want to make a package for custom textures, but you don't want to make like a conversation tree. You don't want to make like, you're not making a conversation tree. You just want to quickly, if you just want to quickly make a blank package that you can import stuff into, all you got to do, hit new, hit, call it the name of your package, and then leave it as the default animation set is what I usually use, and then just name it whatever. It will open up an animation set, but you know, just close that. Then just save that. Now you have a package, and once you import something into that package, you can just delete your placeholder object. It's that simple. Anyways, 
let's get into what we were actually trying to do, which is make a conversation tree for our nomad. When you double click your conversation tree, you'll be greeted with this giant menu. It looks kind of similar to Kismet, but not exactly. It works similar, however, when you right click, when you right click, it'll bring up a bunch of options. We don't need to worry about these ones for now. First off, we're just gonna do hat conversation node. This will make an empty node. If we click this, we can choose the individual, you know, values. Let's have this say, hello, welcome to my tutorial series. Again, you don't need to make it say this. This, I'm just using an example text. Down here in the conversation type, this lets you choose all of the uh, conversation types. A few of these are, you know, unique to me. But a few of these are stuff that I made, but we're not gonna get into that. So you won't see this many, but you'll see a few. For example, UI is like, you know, general, like non-character speak. Uncanny is the crow. Gloom is snatcher, is the purple text box. Not necessarily snatcher only, but just the purple text box. I forget what gossip is. I think gossip is the Nyakuza text box for the cats when they're talking to each other. Internet is also that. Internet is the one where they have like the reviews of food in Nyakuza. It's that. Uh, I'll probably do an individual tutorial on how to set that up because it's a little complicated. Anyways, regular is just the default text box. Telephone, you know, that's the telephone text box. They're usually pretty self-explanatory. You wouldn't sign, some wouldn't sign text box. All that jazz. Let's just leave it normal for now. For once you've once you've defined the specifics, once you've defined the specifics of what you want the thing to say, you drag from this red box into the root. What the root node is is basically level loaded when the text box is loaded up it will start from here then you can make another text box and tie this in it'll give you some options for links but most of these aren't going to be used very often the, mo the one that you're going to be using the most is hat conversation link which links two text boxes together and then you say my name is no mad why not yes mad i don't know some something silly Remember to save your package. Now we're going to go into the we're going to go into our nomad, select our th thing, and then tie that in. Now, if we just load our level, boom! Hello, welcome to my tutorial series. My name is Nomad. Why not Yes Mad? See, our guy works just fine. Now let's say you want to make like a sign, right? There is no actor for sign. They're just signs. First off, you go into the game's files, search up sign from the static mesh. There's a few signs you can use. I usually use this one. It's usually pretty good. Uh, there's a bunch of metro signs that you'll see here. But I usually use I usually use this sign when I want to put a thing into the level. Let's delete our nomad for now. Let's put this down. Now this is just a mesh. It's just a model. This thing has no programming to it, so you can't actually talk to it. So how do we make it so that you can talk to it? Well, first let's rewrite our conversation tree. Then let's change these to UI because I think that text box will look good with this. Now, how do we make this sign display the text box we just made? We'll right click on it, go to add actor, and choose interact point. Add interact point. This will make a little target. You want to move it sort of like that 
but you can sort of mess around with it till you find a sweat you like. What this does is makes it so that now the thing has an interact point, but pressing E doesn't actually do anything. This is because this is only an interact point without any programming. It doesn't actually have any programming to do anything when it's interacted with. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our handy friend Kismet. Open up the Kismet menu again and then select your interact point in the level. Once you have that, go into Kismet, right click and do new event using hat interact point on interaction. This will be so every time you interact with this thing, it will trigger. Then what we're going to do is go into New Action, Messages, Conversation. Or, you know, just type message or uh, conversation into the uh, search bar. Then what you're going to do is select the uh, text box, or not the text box. Then what you're going to do is select your conversation tree in your uh, content browser, go into Kismet, and then do the same thing that you did for the NPC. Then tie it into the little thing here. And then you will need to make it so that when you interact with this, it plays this conversation tree. But right now it wouldn't work because it doesn't know what to display the conversation tree to. We need to display it to the player. So, new variable, player, player. And then just tie that in there. What the actor's tab is, what the actor node is for, is for making it so that if you're making a custom NPC, you can make that NPC do their talking animations when they're interacted with. So say you make a nomad, you would put that nomad object variable in and then tie that into this. But for this sign, we don't need to do that. Instead, what we're gonna do is select the interact point itself and put that down as an object using new object variable using hat interact point zero. Tie that in. What this will do is it will center the camera on our sign and it'll just generally look nicer. You don't need to do this, but it just looks nicer. Boom. And that's all you need to do to set up a conversation tree from an interact point. You can use conversation trees from interact points to make physically anything you want into an interactable conversation tree displayer, or anything into an NPC. And that'll, that's basically all there really is to go over conversation trees. There's obviously more specific things to uh, worry about when making conversation trees, but those are the basics. But I'm gonna go over one more thing in our conversation tree. I'm just giving you the bare minimum that you need to understand for the Blue Rift tutorial. After that, I'll be going on a tutorial series where I'll go into conversation trees in more depth. Well, let's say we wanna have some fancy display effects onto our text. Now, let's say you wanna make like you know, fancy text effects. For example, let's make like the word blue rift. Let's make that text blue. Luckily, I don't have to compile anything on this because Ouija has made a nice Steam guide that compiles all of the all of the tags that will let you customize your text. So for example, blue is timepiece. So let's just type in, over, over the one that you want to turn blue, let's type in timepiece, then type in timepiece again. Then type in, then type in timepiece again and put a slash, and put a, and put this slash there. I don't know if that's a forward or backslash, I mix them up all the time. This will be so only this part will be blue. You can then do stuff like, you know, big, all that jazz. But we're not really going to do anything too complicated. I'm just showing you how to do it. I will link this guide in the description so you can use these if you want to make some fancy text effects. 
all, you know, stuff like this. Stuff like that. You know, all that jazz. Ouija has made his own really good guide on modding, but you know, it's not in video format. That's kind of what I'm doing. And uh, his, his guide covers more specific aspects of the editor. But yeah, I'm gonna link this part just because it's a good, like, reference towards what all of the individual tags are that will let you customize text effects. We just made a simple edit to make it turn blue. Let's see, let's play test it to see if it worked. And boom, that's really all there is to it. I was gonna say this is, was gonna be a more shorter tutorial, but turns out I actually went over a lot more complicated stuff. So this tutorial ended up being longer than I expected it to. I expected this tutorial to be like five minutes long. It turned out being much longer. But I am certain that the next tutorial will be much shorter. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over how to make a music tree. What is a music tree? Well, you'll just have to find out in the next tutorial.